ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Secretary McNamara, Governor Conley, Senator Yarbrough, General Green, distinguished members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mr. and Mrs. O'Malley, distinguished guests, my fellow citizens. Some of the oldest words never seem to grow old. And among them are these, gallantry above and beyond the call of duty. Fifteen months ago, Sergeant Robert Emmett O'Malley did more than fight for honor. In a place of great danger, he ignored danger. Wounded, he refused to consider his own safety. At the risk of his own life, he shielded other men's lives. Today, I will give him the highest medal his nation can offer. Every time that I have awarded the Medal of Honor, I wonder what it is that makes men of this quality. And I wonder what a man can say in the face of such bravery. As of today, I still don't have the answer. For the highest courage is always a mystery, and not even the best words about duty and devotion to country are ever enough to honor it. I can think of only one gift sufficient to honor men like this. We can assure this man, and we can assure every man who wears our uniform that their cause is a good cause, that the principles they stand for are sound principles, that the battle they are fighting deserves their bravery to back a commitment honorably given, that is a good cause, to shield a nation from aggression that is a good cause. To defend men against coercion and intimidation, that is a good cause. To prove that terror and aggression simply will not work, that is a good cause. It is a cause which deserves not only the bravery of our soldiers, but the patience and the fortitude of all of our citizens. And all of these we do have in good supply. It far outweighs the reluctance of men who exercise so well the right of dissent, but let others fight to protect them from those whose very philosophy is to do away with the right of dissent. A little over a month ago, I reviewed our troops with General Westmoreland at Cameron Bay. He told me then, Mr. President, no commander-in-chief ever commanded a finer fighting force. And if any man needs proof of that, let him consider these men. John O'Malley and Daniel O'Malley, ex-Marines. Brian O'Malley, now serving with the Marines. And finally, 
their brother, Sergeant Robert Emmett O'Malley, Marine Corps Reserve, first Marine in Vietnam to receive the Medal of Honor. Because we love peace, we will never glorify war. But because men like this exist, we can always honor courage. The Secretary of the Navy, Mr. Nitze, will now read the citation. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Medal of Honor to Sergeant Robert E. O'Malley, then a Corporal, United States Marine Corps, for service is set forth in the following citation. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action against the communist Viet Cong forces at the risk of his own life above and beyond the call of duty, while serving as squad leader in Company I, 3rd Marines, 3rd Marine Division reinforced near An Kuong II, South Vietnam on 18 August 1965. While leading his squad in the assault against a strongly entrenched enemy force, his unit came under intense small arms fire. With complete disregard for his personal safety, Corporal O'Malley raced across an open rice paddy to a trench line where enemy forces were located. Jumping into the trench, he attacked the Viet Cong and singly killed eight of the enemy. He then led his squad to the assistance of an adjacent Marine unit which was suffering heavy casualties. Continuing to press forward, he reloaded his weapon and fired with telling effect into the enemy emplacement. He personally assisted in the evacuation of several wounded Marines and again regrouping the remnants of his squad, he returned to the point of the heaviest fighting. Ordered to an evacuation point by an officer, Corporal O'Malley gathered his besieged and badly wounded squad and boldly led them under fire to a helicopter for withdrawal. Although three times wounded in this encounter and facing imminent death from a fanatic and determined enemy, he steadfastly refused evacuation and continued to cover his squad's boarding of the helicopters while from an exposed position, he delivered fire against the enemy until his wounded men were evacuated. Only then, with his last mission accomplished, did he permit himself to be removed from the battlefield. By his valor, leadership, and courageous efforts in behalf of his comrades, he served as an inspiration to all who observed him and reflected the highest credit upon the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service.